Hi, I'm Brian Chu with the Underwater Photography Guide. Today, I want to talk about Lightroom's custom white balance function. Uh, it's one of those tools that I think every underwater photographer should be familiar with if they use Lightroom. It doesn't take a whole lot of time uh, to use it, but it can make a really big difference to the quality of your, uh, of your photos. So, what we're going to cover in the video today is three common scenarios where this tool can be quite useful. And I'm going to walk you through three examples with my own photos. Let's get started with three common scenarios where custom white balance can be quite useful. So the first one is the background color is not what you want. So uh, maybe it's a bit too green, for example. Second scenario is the whole photo is either too warm or too cold. And the third scenario is the subject does not pop as much as you would like it to. So maybe it blends in a bit with the background, it's a bit bluish kind of thing. Uh, let's get into a bit about how white balance works in Lightroom. So in Lightroom we have two white balance controls, a, uh, the temperature and the tint, as well as an eyedropper. So you can use the eyedropper to select a target neutral which will automatically set the temperature and tint and I'll, I'll show you how to do that. But anyway, what do these controls mean? The, uh, the temperature, the lower the temperature, the more cool the photo is, the more blue. And, and the higher the temperature is, is the warmer that the photo will be, so the more kind of yellow-orange. Tint-wise, uh, the lower the tint, the more green the photo will be, and the higher the tint, the more magenta. Okay, so these are our different controls. Let's jump into how to use them. The first example I want to talk about is a uh, leafy sea dragon shot, where, uh, as you can see, the background is quite green. So I was shooting auto white balance, and you can see the camera picked a temperature of 5350 and a tint of plus 15. I'm going to try to use the uh, custom white balance tool, so it's in the develop tab in Lightroom, this eyedropper here, to uh, make the background a bit more blue. So the way this works, you just take the eyedropper and find uh, a target neutral, which is something that's either white or gray, or, or something that should be white or gray. And uh, so if we click on it, then it, it will try to find the best white balance to make whatever you clicked on into an actual white or gray neutral. So uh, I often find it's easier to, to find a gray, so let's try this uh, spot here in the substrate. Um, and you can see here uh, the temperature has, has gone up quite a bit to 8300 and the tint is 150, so it's max. And that's made this uh, quite a red, kind of purpley red photo. So that's uh, definitely not what we want, it's too far. And, and so we're going to have to iterate, and this is often what you have to do is, is try a few different spots till you find one that looks pretty decent. So um, why don't we try this part here? Okay. Great. So this uh, it gives us temperature of 6100 and a, a tint of 84. That's pretty good. It's maybe a little bit reddish or purplish here. If you remember, the higher the tint, the more magenta, the lower the tint, the more green. So let's just kind of knock 13 off of this one. There we go. I think that looks pretty good. Uh, so I put the photos side by side so you can really see the difference uh, from where it started with the green to where he finished up with a much nicer blue background. Second situation where custom white balance is quite useful is when the entire photo is either too warm or too cold. So in this case, uh, it's a shot of a pajama squid at night. As you can see, the squid and the sand are both very yellow, so it looks too warm. And this is with an as shot white balance of 50-50 and temp of plus 13. So I don't want my pajama squid looking like it has jaundice, so let's do some adjustments and see what we get to. Um, we could try on the squid first, but in this case it just makes it warmer, so that's really no good. So maybe let's try out here in the sand. And this for me is quite a bit uh, too cold. So we can try a different piece of sand, maybe. Um, this looks pretty good. So this is a temperature of 3800 and a tint of plus 22. It's still a little bit cool for me. I like having a bit of warmth. And, and the pajama squid was, uh, he was a bit yellowy brown because he was changing color as I approached. Um, so let's just try adding a couple hundred of temperature. And uh, yeah, I think I'm quite happy with that. Here's the before and after of the pajama squid. Um, so you can see it looks quite a bit more natural after making the white balance adjustments. Third situation I get a lot of use out of using custom white balance is 
when we have a subject that uh, I'd like to make pop more. And this is typically like a bigger animal against more of a blue background. So in this case, it's a, uh, it's a humpback and it was a few feet away from me. So the uh, water was absorbing quite a bit of red light between the surface and the whale and between the whale and my camera. And so it gives it this bluish uh, tinge. So this, my camera used an as shot white balance at 5650 temperature and plus seven tint. So let's try a custom white balance and see what we get. And I'm just gonna try it on the belly here. Um, as my target neutral, I want that to be white. And you can see Lightroom goes all out, goes a bit crazy. Goes up to 50,000 temperature and 121 tint. And for me, this, this photo, the whale pops more, but it does look a little bit fake. So I'm gonna go to a bit more modest of a temperature of 15,000. And uh, try a tint of, let's say, 75. Yeah, that looks, that looks quite good. So I'm very happy uh, with the adjustments here. So you can see here from the before and after that uh, making a custom white balance adjustment and some tweaks uh, has allowed me to make this humpback pop quite a bit more from the blue background. Now that we've looked at uh, three examples of using custom white balance, I just have three key takeaways I wanna leave you with. First, white balance is very important, but it's often overlooked. Don't forget to try it out. Add it to your workflow and see how it goes. Uh, if the color of a photo looks or feels off in any way, uh, even after you made an adjustment, play around with the white balance. You have to iterate and try different neutral points before you find one that really works. Third is custom white balance can sometimes overcorrect. Uh, often that's the case. So check to see what happens if you uh, adjust somewhere in between your original as shot balance and the custom white balance. So now that you've looked through this and you've gone through the video, take this back to your own photos. Go find three old photos of yours for which custom white balance might help. Um, and play around with them. See what you can uh, come up with and see if you can get some improvements. So that's it. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you found this useful.